Welcome to our pre-opening day social media q and I'm Wayne Rand Dazzo, and I'm pleased to be joined by the owner of the New York Mets, Steve Cohen, and as we are just a few days from opening day and next week, the home opener, a lot of optimism around the ball club and a lot of questions poured in off of your one tweet. I saw you had over a thousand replies to your tweet asking for a, a Q&A from the Mets fans out there. So we'll get to it. And Here we're going to answer every one of them tonight, aren't we? Very good. Yes, we are. Definitely. We're going to go for 12 hours. <laughs> Whatever it takes. <laughs> So we'll just go and we're going to run right through it. We'll go in order and we're going to start with, you know, the team. That's what everybody wants to know about roster construction, the front office. So the first question is from Freddie 1331. He asks, how do you feel ultimately about how the off season went? Are there any particular guys you were disappointed not to acquire and any players you feel a desperate need to resign? Well, overall, I thought it went pretty well. I mean, I think we, uh, we had a real need to uh, create depth in the ball club. I think we've done that in our pitching, relief pitching, you know, outfielders. Uh, so I think, you know, our management team did a really great job as far as providing that depth, which is, you know, really important as, you know, you're going to have injuries at some point with somebody, you don't know who it's going to be. And so it's, I guess it's next man up. And I think we're in pretty good shape there. Um, as far as uh, players that uh, disappointed you know obviously we wanted to get Bauer and we made a heck of a bid I thought we had him but you know it didn't turn out that way so um, that's life you know we, we have a really good ball club great ball club good group of guys that really like being with each other too the clubhouse looks like it's you know a, a good place to be and they like each other so 162 games to prove yeah. <laughs> A lot of games. That's right. <laughs> the next question comes from the Nature Boy One. He asks, since taking ownership, are you satisfied with the changes the Mets have made on and off the field? And what additions will the fans see next? Yeah, I think, you know, from a, I just talked about from a baseball perspective, I think we're in pretty good shape. Um, you know, I'm getting to know the organization. In a COVID world, it's a little tougher to get to know people given – you know, we're not uh, given proximity you know, is, is far away. I've been doing plenty of Zoom calls for sure. And, and uh, but it's never quite the same as, you know, getting to know them personally, having dinner with them, you know, just meeting people by the water cooler and just talking to them. And so uh, but that's going to change. And, uh, you know, I think the organization is in pretty good shape. We've made a you know, we've, we've made some changes, you know, it's conceivable we'll make other changes as we evaluate what we need, and what we don't need. You know, the goal is to create a, a great ball club, not just uh, on the field, but off the field, too. Um, and, you know, that, that's, you know, I, I said in my first press conference, I don't accept mediocrity well. And so we're going to constantly think about upgrading any place we can where we think we need to. The next question is kind of a more of a big picture thing. It comes from Jay Sheehan, 0742. Do you have a vision for how you'd like the team to be built? And for the last few years, starting pitching and power, sacrifice some defense. This person wants to know what your philosophy will be for building the team. Well, you want it all, right? You want great pitching, great hitting, great defense. And, you know, but unfortunately, you got to put, you know, you, there's only, you can only do so much. Um, unfortunately, our, our, you know, and I've said this before, our farm system on the upper levels isn't where it ought to be. And so we've had to go out and find players on the free, on the free agency uh, level. And, um, but ultimately, you, you know, you want a strong farm system pushing your players. You want competition from within. You want them to learn the culture from within. Generally, I think it's cheaper. It's, you're probably better off developing a, a strong farm system as opposed to gambling on free agency. I think uh, the great teams do both. We're going to be able to do both. We're going to, you know, obviously we, we can afford a payroll, a good payroll. But in addition, you know, we also want players coming from, you know, down in the farm system and, and pushing up to, you know, create really good competition on the field for, you know, the positions that are available. Our next question comes from Tamid Kalam. And the question is, was there a particular thought process about the decision to not go over the luxury tax threshold for this year? Well, I mean, I would have with Bauer if, if he chose to join us. So uh, it doesn't make I don't think it makes a lot of sense to go over for a couple million dollars because that affects your, your payroll the following year and the following year after that. So 
Um, you know, the answer is, you know, we, we always have that option. There may be opportunities mid season to add people that would put us over. I'm not adverse to it, but I think you, know, you got to do it intelligently. From a rod six, nine, zero nine did the Dodgers going, is this well the real, is this the real a rod? I, I don't not to my knowledge. I, oh, okay, I got, okay, got it. I think his is just A Rod. <laughs> All right, I, mean, I just think that would be great. I mean, be, <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe he'll have one for next time. Okay, hopefully. This person says, "Did the Dodgers going well above the luxury tax to get the players they wanted? Do anything to change your thinking?" I mean, not really. I think I just explained it. Um, uh, I'm not, like I said, I'm not averse to going over the luxury tax, but it's got to fit our long-term plan. Um, it's easy to go over a first year, but if you tie yourself up for the next five, 10 years, um, you create inflexibility. And if something goes wrong, you're not able to fix it. So it really comes back to, you know, having a strong farm system and, and then having the option to bring in free, free agents when and if we need them. Um, I think both are important and you can't do one without, you know, without, to be successful long-term, you need to do both. Our next question is from Amazing Buzz. I, I, I hope he really is as amazing as he says he yeah. is, but he wants to know which circumstances would you override a decision that is made by team president Sandy Alderson? Well, if I did, it'd probably create a buzz, um, which is probably why he asked it. Um, and, um, you know, we, we agree on a lot of things. I mean, uh, our discussions are lively. Uh, Sandy's a pro. Uh, our people in the organization, they're solid. They know what they're doing. I said in my original press conference, you know, I, I'm not a baseball guy. I mean, I, I like baseball, but I don't have the experience of it that they do. So if I were to override, it would be very rare. And, and, and for a reason that, you know, I can't actually think of, think today what it would be. Listen, I'm the owner. I, have, I can do it. I, I can view anything I want. But that's not the way I operate. I, I, I really take um, take in people's point of views and uh, and come to a consensus of what we should do. This is a good question from Brianne Buchanan. A little, a little fantasy baseball involved here. If you could have any past Mets player on the current roster, who would it be and why? Well, I think that's an easy one, Tom Seaver, right? I mean, one of the greatest pitchers ever. That would be a pretty dynamic duo, uh, Seaver and DeGrom. I mean, I like that. I like the sound of that. Yeah, they, they did call him the franchise for a reason. So that's probably exactly. A good exactly. Next question is from C. Shenny 13. Will the Mets be buyers when it comes to the trade deadline, assuming that they are in the playoff race? Well, we better not, but we better not be sellers because that'll be disappointing. Right. So I'm hopeful that we're going to be buyers and, and, uh, and I expect to be buyer, a buyer uh, for the right situation. You know, at that point, uh, if we're playing well and we believe we're going to be in the playoffs, you know, if we can add people that to um, round out the team, we're going to do it. Interesting question here uh, from Ash to Ash Zero. Are you willing to release a player under contract that is not productive and detrimental to the team? Well, you know, that's a big uh, category detrimental to the team. So I'm not sure. There are lots of reasons why somebody would be detrimental. Listen, that, those are individual situations. You weigh them, you know, at, at the time. Um, it's really hard to speculate on why I might do something. But in the end, you know, you want a club that is playing well. Uh, you want a club that's uh, – uh, you don't want any cancers in the clubhouse. So, you know, I could think of scenarios where you might do that. But, you know, I mean, right now I'm not thinking about that. And when the time comes, I'll deal with it. This question came from so many people that this would take 12 hours if I read all the Twitter handles that <laughs> asked these questions. But all right. contract extensions, Francisco Lindor, Michael Conforto, Noah Syndergaard. What are your thoughts on the potential of those? Well, listen, you know, we're talking to all of them and um, it's hard to know exactly how they're all going to turn out. You know, it takes two people to sign a contract, not one. You know, if we're focused on Francisco and, and Michael. Those are the ones that are sort of immediate things that we, you know, we have to deal with. Obviously, uh, Noah is important to the club. You know, he's coming back from a serious injury and, and uh, we're open to conversation. But I, I think that's going to be a different type of conversation than what we're going to have with Francisco and Michael. 
Our next question comes from Michael T. Conti. You said in your first press conference that it was important for the Mets to have a diverse group of employees, not just for the sake of diversity, but for the sake of diversity of thought. So how have you and Sandy executed on that so far and, and how will that continue to go in the future? Well, you know, like I said at, at the press conference, you know, diversity does matter to, uh, to me and, and Sandy and, and, and the Mets organization. You know, for the reasons you stated, you know, also, you know, for diversity of thought. And as an example of following through on that, you know, we just named Jeannie Molino as, uh, you know, one of our board of directors. Uh, she's done phenomenal work in the uh, Cohen Family Foundation and it's going to, you know, working with Alex and the Mets Foundation in addition to doing other work for the Mets organization in diversity. So um, she's well qualified. She's a lawyer and I'm excited to have her as part of the team. Um, in addition, um, we just named uh, Kat McElhaney as um, team doctor. And um, so we're following through on what we said. We do have some questions that surround City Field and, of course, Willits Point, the area uh, around the ballpark as well. So I want to get to those. And the first one is from F.D. Alessandro. Any thought to making City Field more Met-centric and not include some Dodgers history like it does with the Jackie Robinson rotunda? Well, like I said before, you know, we want to celebrate Mets history and there'll be multiple ways we're going to do that. But in the same respect, you know, we got to respect, you know, one of the greatest figures, most important figures ever in baseball. And so, you know, we'll figure that out. And, and I'm sure there'll be lots of ideas and, you know, how to execute on satisfying both requirements. And, um, you know, we'll get there. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll figure that out. I know you've got the Tom Seaver statue coming up this year that's going to be finally unveiled and we got tom siever we got uh, ron darling being uh, you know put in the hall of fame this year like i said there's lots of ideas out there you know and we're gonna we're gonna find uh, time time and and to have our fans participate in celebrating that history next question is from david ha 6865712 he says do you have any plans to update the area around City Field? Not all Mets fans live in New York City. A lot of them, including myself, drive three hours to see a game and no decent hotel to stay at close to the stadium. We'd love to spend a long weekend at City Field. He says, make it happen, Uncle Steve. I, I noticed a lot of fans are calling you Uncle Steve. I don't know if you're, if you're okay with that or not. I'm totally fine with that. It's better than the alternative. I can, if, I start, if we start losing some games, I'm afraid what they're going to call me. So... Um, um, yeah, I mean, you know, that's something that is a, um, is a compli complicated question because uh, the area around City Field is not owned by the Mets. It's owned by the state and the city. And, and um, so, yeah, I mean, in, in, our, in our perfect world, it'd be great to build something around the stadium. Um, how it's done um, is up in the air. I mean, I, I've, I've, uh, I've thought about this. Um, and, um, you know, this is this got to be a public private partnership with the city and state. And so um, but, you know, I, I would be excited about the possibility of developing around city field. And um, so, uh, you know, that's something that's in the back of my head and we'll get there. Our next question comes from Graphics Joker. He says, hi, Steve. Can you also extend city field for a Mets art gallery and call it the Met? Well, you know, there's a pretty good museum called the Met, and um, I'm not sure they'd be happy with that. I, last thing I need to do is get into a lawsuit with the Met. So um, saying that, um, you know, as part of a maybe some point down the road, redeveloping City Field or the area around it, you know, all those things are possible. Um, you know, it's too early to, to really focus on that. I've, I've, I'm really focused on baseball now and, and, you know, getting to know the organization. Um, you know, so I would call that if we get to that point where we're talking about art galleries, because the team is operating well and the team's performing well, I call that a high class problem. Our next questions kind of surround the area of the fan experience. And, you know, this one might be the main event of all the questions that you'll be asked, I guess outside of the contract extensions of Lindor and Porto and Syndergaard, everyone wants to know about the potential return of the black jerseys. The black jerseys. Well, 
I can say with absolute certainty that the black jerseys are coming back. They'll come back for a few games this year at some point, and you'll be able to buy those jerseys, you know, but, but you know, at some point after that, or, you know, I'll leave that to my marketing people, but the black jerseys are coming back. Wow. I, I feel like that we should take a moment to let the fans really celebrate so they don't miss the next question because this has been on the minds of, of many, many, many Mets fans for the last, ever since Pete Alonso, I think, said he wanted to wear those black jerseys again. This has been on their minds. So, well, you know, it is, it is the most critical question that needed to be answered, more important than anything else we can even imagine. Um, and um, I'm sure that's going to create controversy tomorrow or whenever. Uh, <laughs> right now, probably. Uh, yeah, probably right now. So uh, um, I can't wait to see what my Twitter feed looks like. <laughs> I'm sure you'll have a lot of thank yous and maybe some of the traditionalists. Not yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm sure there'll be a little bit on both sides. Are you surprised by the nostalgia for those black jerseys? No, not at all. I think people, you know, uh, want to celebrate another example of celebrating Mets history. You know, the, 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 the team performed well at that time and people have fond memories of that. And I'm happy to accommodate the fans who, you know, most of the fans want it. And so uh, and the players want it which is, in fact, I'm going to have the players, you know, we have some designs and I want the players to, you know, be involved in picking out the right design. Well, that should be a lot of fun. The next question is from Healed One. Can there be a pregame fan home run derby? First, how many fans can hit it out of the park? <laughs> uh, oh, should we, should we put a fence around the infield? Is that what we're doing? That might so, help. Yeah, that might help. That might like a little league park. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I, you know, I applaud, you know, innovative ideas, but I, I, I don't think we're going to do that. So, um, uh, but thanks, thanks for the, uh, you know, thinking about it. All right. So black jerseys, yes. Pre-game fan home run derby. No. Nah, I don't think that's going to work. <laughs> How about old timers day? That was a popular question too. Yeah. I mean, you know, once again, I mean, I, I've spoken on this in the past, uh, it's probably a 22 event. And, um, you know, so I'll let my uh, baseball people and organizational people kind of figure out exactly what the theme's going to be. But a hundred percent, you know, one, it's another example of celebrating our history. The, the fans want to see, you know, the players from, you know, from different eras. And, um, and, and, and I think that'd be a fun, exciting day. Well, another fun, exciting day is coming up the home opener on April 8th. And M. Carey N.J. would like to know if you will be throwing out the first pitch to celebrate the return of baseball to City Field, the return of the fans, and to usher in a new era of the New York Mets. Well, I have a torn rotator cuff, so you don't want me throwing the first pitch because I don't know where it's going to go. OK, <laughs> so but what I can say is that, you know, given, you know, the world and you know, we've lived in with COVID, there are people out there that we want to, uh, uh, you know, be, throw the first pitch out, you know, the people who have been on the front lines. And so we're planning something that I think the fans will enjoy. This was uh, this next question was also a very popular one. I, I know my broadcast partner, Howie Rose, is a bit, big advocate of this, but people want to know about Saturday day games. Can we have more Saturday afternoons in the ballpark? Why not? Okay. I mean, uh, I don't see why we can't do that. I mean, you know, it's better for the kids, right? We want to, we, we want uh, our next generation to uh, enjoy and be at the ballpark and enjoy their affiliation with the Mets. And so, uh, yeah, I, I, I think we should do that. Our next question is from Mia J. Perlman. She'd like to know about Piano Man, the Billy Joel song. Can it be played again between the top and the bottom of the eighth inning, please? Well, anything's possible, right? I mean, that's not a crazy request. The negative side is my chief of staff is a Billy Joel fan. I'm like a, a wild Billy Joel fan. And I'm not sure I want to make him happy. So, <laughs> so I got to think about that. There are positives, there are negatives. So, you know, we'll put that on the, you know, to be examined uh, list. All right. So black jerseys, yes. We have free right? games. Billy, Billy Joel, Piano Man, Joel, maybe. 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 Yeah. All right. Next question is from Dominic DiBiase. Will there be any promotions this year? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, we'll, we'll have plenty of promotions. Um, you can count on that. Um, 
And, uh, you know, we're looking forward to having the fans back in the ballpark. And, and uh, we're looking forward to have promotions to, uh, you know, a little something extra to, you know, tell our fans how much we appreciate them. Our friend, the Nature Boy, one is back. And his next question is, how can the Mets reach out more to the community? And are there any programs or initiatives the Mets are developing to get communities involved? Well, you know, the good news is, you know, the, the foundation is in, in excellent hands. You know, my wife will be running the foundation with Jeannie Molino. Uh, they're experts at, at, and they've been doing incredible charitable work for my own family foundation for a long time. And so uh, it's our intention to be involved in the community. The community will notice that we're involved. Um, and, um, but I'm going to leave it to Alex and Jeannie to do their, um, you know, due diligence on, on where we should do it and how we should do it. And, uh, but the, but the com community will, will notice it. Next question is from Matt, 23824525. Must, must have a new account. Congratulations on the purchase of the Mets. What other things are you going to do to celebrate the history of the team, especially those good old 1986 Mets? Well, you know, listen, it's, it's certainly uh, we've got some uh, dates coming up. I mean, we're going to have an old timers day, right? We're going to have it in 22. We're going to have it in 23. And so why not celebrate the 86 Mets? That's as good as any, anything. So, uh, you know, we haven't uh, formalized it yet. Well, like I said, I'll leave it to the organization to do the work on that. And, uh, but, you know, listen, we, if, if we're not celebrating 86 Mets, we certainly want a good contingent of those players to show up for uh, old timers day. Next question is from JB Norwacky. Can you stop wrapping the hot dogs like birthday presents? Slap the dog on the bun and hand it over. You know something that is way above my pay grade. Okay. Like, you know, I mean, I'm going to leave it to the uh, concession people and, and uh, I'm sure they'll take that suggestion seriously, but you know, it's, it's just not my forte. You don't want me making those decisions. I mean, a hot dog is kind of like a birthday present. It's, that's a, that's an important thing to have at the ballpark. Well, listen, that and a beer. I mean, it's a pretty good day. That's right. That's what it's all about. Yeah. We have a couple ticketing questions. One is <laughs> how can fans get tickets? There's going to be, uh, obviously a lower capacity going into the beginning of the season. Yeah. I mean, I mean, obviously, uh, because of the capacity constraints, you know, obviously, and, and things will loosen up. I mean, people are going to get vaccinated. And so, you know, even before the season, we've gone from 10% to 20% of capacity. And I can see it changing again, relatively soon, uh, whether it's preseason or right into the season, I don't know. So, you know, as soon as tickets become available and, and, uh, we, we want to accommodate everybody. I know everyone's, excited about coming back to the ballpark, you know, excited to see this team that I think is going to be really special. And so, but, you know, I don't make those regulations. The government does that. And so, uh, you know, we're pushing hard to uh, get the capacity limits up, but um, you know, there's, there's a lot of people involved in making those decisions. I'm, I'm only one voice. Next question is from John nine, seven Jackson. What is the best part so far about owning the Mets? Well, I got to tell you, I mean, uh, you know, it's it's been really it's interesting. I mean, it's a whole new are, you know, arena, new field for me. Uh, so I'm learning a lot. I mean, obviously learning a lot about baseball. And uh, and I frankly, I think the things I enjoyed the most was the interaction with the fans. You know, they're passionate. They, they love the Mets. They are they remind me of what to think about, you know, which I really appreciate. And so, um, you know, listen, their, their opinions matter to me. And uh, so I've enjoyed it. It's been fun. You know, I was in the city the other day and in a car and people are honking their horn and I'm waving at them and <laughs> fans are waving at me. And, you know, so it was fun. You know, like it's got, it's a new experience, a little bit you know, pu more public than I've been in the past. But, you know, listen, it, it, you know, they've, they've, the fans have been great. So, uh, you know, that's that's been the fun part. And I'm going I'm to go off script just for a second, but I don't know about you, but I've seen. You know, the Mets have a great fan base and people that remember 1962 when they first started and 1986 and so on. But there is a, a great deal of young Mets fans, too, that right. seem very involved and very enthusiastic about the team and about the sport. Well, that's good, right? Because that's what we ultimately that's the next generation um, that, you know, is going to be our, our fans for the next you know, 20, 30, 40 years. And so, uh, you know, it's good to hear. I mean, you know, baseball needs to 
think about what the fans want, what they need, and how to make their experiences as, as exciting as it can be in the park and, and watching on TV. And uh, so it's good to hear that people want to, you know, are interested in the Mets and, and uh, you know, we, we want them to be exci- as excited as, as I am. Our next question is from the NJM. How was the process of buying the team? Well, I mean, you know, it wasn't easy, right? I went through two iterations of it. Second, second one was a little easier than the first. But, you know, it, it's, it's anxiety producing, right? Because no guarantee you're going to get it. And so uh, until, until they tell you, you know, until you sign on the dotted line, uh, you never know. And so uh, uh, it, was, it was, you know, certainly interesting to, to go through. I'm glad I got it as opposed to not getting it. Our next question is from Al Soto114. After a few months of ownership, what's been the biggest adjustment for you and what has surprised you that you didn't really expect coming in? Huh. Well, you know, they, I would say the public scrutiny is, is you, know, you know, it has its pluses and minuses, right? Every decision is picked over. Um, you know, the press is going to, you know, has a microscope on, on the team. And so, um, uh, obviously, we had some issues that we had to deal with. Um, you know, that, uh, you know, from a organizational standpoint that we dealt with and dealt with quickly. Um, but you know, that's the way it works. I mean, you know, whenever you're involved with an organization, um, you know, things are going to, they're going to be good things and then they're going to be issues that are going to pop up and you have to deal with them all. And so, um, uh, but I, I would say that the scrutiny, the microscope on the team is something that I'm not used to and, but I'm, I'm getting used to it, you know, and, and, uh, um, you know, so it, it, it's working out really well. Our next question comes from 1986 D. I guess A, B, and C were taken. Okay. Have you done <laughs> anything fun yet with the players that only an owner could do, like attempt BP off the pitching staff or anything like that? No, I haven't done too much yet. It's a COVID world, right? So, uh, you know, I only got vaccinated recently. But, you know, I've had conversations with the players and have had dinner with Francisco. And, you know, listen, I look forward to getting to know them better, you know, once uh, we move out of the COVID world. They're good guys, you know, and, you know, I've let a bunch of them know that if they need me, I'm there for, you know, whatever they need. Next question is from at NYC Mets 13. What are your realistic goals for your first year as the owner of the team? Listen, I want a really competitive team. I mean, only one team wins the World Series, you know, so I'm not, I'm not predicting, a, you know, we're, you know, I want to get deep into the playoffs. I want the team to, uh, I want the fans to be excited by the team. And, and I think we have a really good team. So, and I think they're going to be excited. I've stated before that I'd like to be in the World Series within three to five years. You know, some people thought that was aggressive. I just looked at it like 10 years seems too long. So you got to come up with a number. But I mean, I think the goal is to be really competitive this year, you get deep into the playoffs and then we'll see what happens. You get deep in the playoffs, anything can happen. Yeah. Maybe it'll take only six months to get to the world series. We'll see. Right. We'll see. You never know. Next question is from my Twitter friend, Mr. Met CPA. Are your punctuation? He's probably in a, he's probably an account. He seems that way. And, he, and he's got a very unique question. Yes. Are your punctuation spacing errors, uh, I guess, on your Twitter account by accident, or is it some sort of billionaire secret code? Well, let's let's just say I'm doing. You know, I'm usually tweeting when I'm doing something else, and so I'm. I'm and, and I've I've got like a funny thought or something I want to put out, and so I, I tend to do it quickly. And so, you know, maybe my punctuation's off, the spacing's off a little bit, but the but my heart and my intent is in every tweet. Hopefully that'll be our last secret society question. Exactly. Hopefully. And the next one comes from Enron chairman. Do you uh, say soda or do you say pop? Um, it's soda. I mean, you know, uh, I don't know who says pop in New York. It's, pop is very regionalized. That's, that's Yeah, that's, exactly. The next question is from CMC dad six. Could you please, pl- could you please pay off Bobby Bonilla so that we don't have to hear about it anymore. Well, you know, I, I proposed a Bobby Bonilla day where I actually hand him a check at home plate every year. So I have a different point of view, but yeah, let's not focus on the negatives. Let's focus on the positives. It doesn't bother me. The next question is from GRP. Are you dense? 
I don't know. Who has a better smile, Brandon Nimmo or Francisco Lindor? God, I don't, you know, I'm not uh, with that. I mean, listen, they call him Mr. Smile for a reason, right? Francisco. I mean, Brandon's got a very nice smile, but <laughs> I'm going with Mr. Smile. Yeah, it's hard to say whose is more prevalent, but uh, yeah. they definitely yeah. both yeah. got two smiley guys there. You know, they're happy guys. What's wrong with that? Uh, a question that was asked by uh, quite, a, quite a few people was about Chris Christie, why he was added to the board of directors, the former governor of New Jersey. And what do you expect him to bring to the organization and to the fan base? Well, he's a diehard Mets fan, diehard. And he's a close friend of mine. And so, I, you know, I could think of, of a, a more perfect guy to put on the board. Um, you know, for those who share different politics, this is not about politics. This is purely about baseball. And I believe this is our last question. This is from C. Hanley 411 wants to know what your favorite opening day memory is. Well, I, you know, what I can say is in about uh, a week, I think it's, I think whatever memory I had, this one's going to surpass it. And so I'm looking forward and really excited about opening the season up and, and getting going. You've got a lot of firsts coming up as the Mets owner. First game, first win, first home opener. So right, things right. for you to celebrate. And I haven't lost a game yet in, <laughs> in the regular season. That's amazing. We do want to say before uh, we let Steve go here that for an update on protocols, you can visit Mets.com slash safe at city. That will allow you to have whatever is the latest information about coming to the ballpark as far as capacity, what it will take to get in the park and all that. So there is, as we've mentioned, still a COVID world, still a pandemic, and trying to get through the end of that before we can have big crowds at City Field once again. Mets owner Steve Cohen, we thank you very much for your time tonight. This was great. Enjoyed it, Wayne. All right, good talking. Take care.